the Lord now, sing it out loud. Come and give the Lord His glory. Eyes are open to the unseen, and my faith is rising in me. So bless the Lord now, sing it out loud. Come and give the Lord His glory. You're calling me deeper, deeper still. You're calling me deeper, deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper still into your love because your love keeps going deeper, deeper still. You're calling me deeper and deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper still into your love because your love keeps going deeper, deeper still. You're calling me deeper, deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper still into your love because your love keeps going deeper, deeper still. You're calling me deeper and deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper still into your love because your love keeps going. There is freedom in the water. There is healing in the water. will never find the end. There is freedom in the water. There is healing in the water of Jesus. Yeah, the river and will never find the end. There is freedom in the water. There is healing in the water of Jesus. You're the river and will never find the end. There is freedom in the water, there is healing in the water of Jesus. You're the river and will never find the end. You're calling me deeper, deeper still. You're calling me deeper, deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper still into your love because your love keeps going deeper, deeper still. You're calling me deeper and deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper still into your love. Because your love keeps going deeper, deeper still. You're calling me deeper, deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper still into your love. Because your love keeps going deeper, deeper still. You're calling me deeper and deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper still into your love, because your love keeps going. There is freedom in the water. There is healing in the water. Oh, Jesus, you're the river, and we'll never find the end. There is freedom in the water. There is healing in the water. You're calling me deeper, deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper still into your love because your love keeps going deeper, deeper still. You're calling me deeper and deeper still. So I'm going deeper, deeper Hallelujah. Still. Come on, lift your hands. Into your love Come on, stand to your feet. Because lift your, your love hands this keeps morning. Going deeper, Come on. Deeper, deeper Hallelujah. How many this You're morning? How many of this morning have a desire to go deeper this morning? Hallelujah. Come on and open up your mouth. Come on. Come on. Sing it again. Sing it. Come on. Come on. You're calling me deeper and deeper still. So I'm going deeper God wants to open up something in this room this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. 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 Hallelujah. So I'm going deeper, deeper, Hallelujah. Still. Come on, open up your mouth this morning. Come on and open up your mouth this morning. 
deeper still. You're calling me deeper and deeper still. So I'm going deeper, 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 deeper still. Into your There is freedom in the water. There's healing in the water. Somebody is about to be healed. Somebody's about to be set free. Somebody is about to be delivered. Come on, somebody, if you believe that this morning, throw both hands up and give God a shout of praise if you believe that this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We're gonna go ahead and take up our tithe and our offering this morning. I want you to give as given unto God this morning, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Amen. Father, we come to you this morning. God, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you for this time that we live, God, and Lord, this opportunity, God, that you've given us, God, that we can give, Father, into the kingdom, that we can sow into the kingdom. Heavenly Father, that we can plant into the kingdom. Heavenly Father, right now, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you. We believe this morning, God, that somebody is about to be delivered. Somebody's about to be saved. Somebody's about to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody's about to be healed. Father God, there's a miracle in this room this morning, God, and it's got somebody's name all over it. God, we're believing this morning, God, that you are going to make yourself known in this room, God. Lord, and online, Heavenly Father, this morning we give you praise. We give you glory and everybody shouted this morning.
is great Sing this with morning. Me, help me. Hallelujah. something in this room right now. I feel something in this place right now. Whew, glory. We're on the last Sunday of 2020. Hallelujah. Somebody just needs to turn around and look back at what God has brought you through. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody ought to shout right there. Hallelujah. I said it's the last Sunday of 2020. And here you are. Here you are. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many would say this morning that 2020 give us all it had? But our God is greater. <laughs> our God is bigger. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, worship Him. Come on and worship Him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! survivor if you want to but honey I overcame because I am an overcomer by the blood by the blood by the blood hallelujah you are name above all me Spirit of liberty and freedom. I feel victory. You are name above oh, all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great. Worship him. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him. Ooh, glory. 
Come on. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to share something with you. And I'm not going to preach the full message. I'm just going to give you the scripture. Just continue to worship him. Listen to me. I'm not preaching yet. I just want to give you something. I feel led to give this to you. Every year when I'm praying, God gives me something. Every year, God lays something specially on my heart for the year. And a couple of months back while I was praying, this is what the Lord of the Lord spoke to me. He said, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. Woo! About three people got that. He said, the year of my redeemed has come. He said, the year of my redeemed has come. Listen. For the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year. Listen, this is the year of the redeemed. This is the year of the redeemed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah, no matter what we've been through, I'm telling you right now, this is the year of the redeemed. 2021 is the year of the redeemed. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift your hands and give God praise this morning. He says, vengeance is mine. He's the avenger this morning. No need for you to do anything but praise him. No need for you to do anything but praise him. Hallelujah, come on. Come on. Will you meet me here again? Yada, da, 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 Come on. 
Yada Boshetanade. your Bibles, get your Bibles, get your Bibles very quickly, get your Bibles, turn to Exodus, Exodus 14, Exodus 14 verse 24 through 30, the Lord has dropped something in my spirit and I'm going to share it with you. We're going out of something and going into something. Amen. We're going out to come in. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord has given this to me, and I believe that, like I said a while ago, 2020 has given it all it's had. You know, but I don't stand here this morning and reflect back on all the bad because I can't see the bad for seeing the good. Amen. I made a statement a couple of weeks ago. It depends on where you're at, where you're looking at this, what point from. Because from the point that I'm at, I'm going to tell you something. We have entered into a season, not just a season, but we have entered into a move of God. Not just a visitation, but it's been more than that. Amen. He has set his glory down right in the midst of this place. And I believe that we're going into something. We're coming out of something and we're going into something. And I believe this morning that as it is given all that it's had, it ain't. It, I, I believe for the world that it looks bad, it looks cloudy, it looks dim, it looks dark. But I'm going to tell you something tonight. I believe that I can shout this morning and I can say it's over because we're going into something new. Amen. I want you to look at Exodus 14, verse 24, and you'll understand that more when we get to the end of this thing. It says, And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and the cloud and the cl and the cloud of the cloud and the and troubled the host of Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, and that they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea of the waters that may come again unto the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its full strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned, covered the chariots and the horsemen, and the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters are a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day, watch this, out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you for just a little while on this. It's over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lift your hands up and give God a shout of praise. If you believe it's over, it's over, it's over. You say, is it all coming to an end, Pastor? I'm telling you that the church, for the church of the living God, it's over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, we come to you. We love you. We thank you. We praise you for this word. We ask you, God, that you would speak to us, speak through us. We'll be careful to give you the glory, give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted, 
Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. After 400 years of slavery and bondage, oppression, God sends a deliverer named Moses to the children of Israel. After visiting Egypt with nine plagues, Pharaoh thrust out the children of Israel. They spoiled the Egyptians. They took their silver, their gold, and all their precious jewels. Then after reconsidering, Pharaoh regrets letting Israel go. He desires to bring them back under his hand to reclaim his slaves, to pursue, so he pursues after them with 600 of his chosen chosen chariots, the best of the best, captains, over every one of them. How many know right there this morning that the enemy does not want to let go? The enemy does not want to relent. The enemy does not want to quit. Exodus 14, verses 13 and 14, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. For the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. After 400 years of sla- as slaves, Israel comes out of the iron furnace of bondage, thinking that it was over. They thought that the chapter of their lives was over. They, they, that they would never again feel the sting of the taskmaster's, taskmaster's whip upon their backs. That they would never again suffer under the oppression of the iron hand of the dictator over their lives. But Pharaoh didn't want it, want it to end. Pharaoh wanted them back under his dominion. How many right here this morning know that the devil doesn't let go easy? The devil doesn't want to give up any territory. How many would say, but today he's losing the fight. I didn't come just to come here to preach but I came here to speak into somebody's life and to prophesy to you this morning I came to decree and to declare an end to the devil's work in your life. The Bible says to resist the devil and he will flee from you. I said resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I said you've got to begin to resist if you want him to flee. Quit giving in to him. Quit listening to him. Quit buying what he's selling and resist him. Turn him off. Put him back in his place. I said this morning, we are going to see a shift. The prophetic word shifts things. The prophetic word changes seasons. The prophetic brings things to life, brings things to death. The prophetic word creates a beginning and it also establishes an end. God sent me here this morning as your pastor with this word to create and to establish today as the end. Listen to me. Many of you today are going to reach the end at the end. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't know what it is in your life that has been trying to destroy you. I don't know if it's physical, spiritual, emotionally, financial, or if it's even relational. But here's what God says about it. Nahum 1 and 9. What do you imagine against the Lord, he will make an under utter end of affliction shall not arise up the second time. How many times have we faced situations and circumstances and the problems in our lives and we wished we could just put it aside and move on? Anybody I'm talking to? How many times this year have you wished that you could just say end it and it would be over? How many times this year have you looked at the mountains and the trials and the giants in your life and you've heard the devil say, it's always going to be like this? My God. Then the devil says you might as well accept it. You might, he says it'll be easier on you if you just learn to live with it. There's something about us that when our normal is interrupted, there is an immediate resistance and we fight against it. How many know this morning that normal has been interrupted in human society of this year? But aren't you glad that God is a God that loves you enough to come invade your normal and to say this is not normal? but what I've got is normal. I want you to know this morning uh, that there's deeper, 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 deeper. There's deeper in God this morning. Uh, All you gotta do is want it. Uh, Listen to me. This morning I come to tell you this. 
that there's something about us that when our normal is interrupted, there's an immediate resistance and we, we begin to fight against it. But when your situation or your problem continues, watch this, over a period of time, we tend to lose our fight and ultimately we begin to accept the condition. We begin to accept our situation. We begin to accept the problem as the new normal. But I came to stir up a fight in you this morning. Woo! I came to wake up the anointing in you. Here at the end of 2020, I came to wake up a rebel in you. I came to stir up a rebellion against everything contrary to the word of God in your life. I don't care how long it existed, how long you have been plagued by it, how long you've suffered from it. If it's contrary to the word of God, it's not normal. It's not normal. If it goes against the word, it ain't normal. I want you to understand understand that. You may have learned to coexist with it. You may have even have your natural glycerin tablets in your pocket this morning. You may have your arthritis medicine in your purse. You may have your insulin right next to you. You may have your Valium and your Prozac but I come to tell you this morning it ain't normal. You may have your nicotine and your Nicorette gum and all the things that help you to deal with to get along with your problem but it ain't normal. It ain't normal. Cancer's not normal. Sugar diabetes is not normal. Heart trouble's not normal. Kidney problems ain't normal. Liver problems ain't normal. Asthma's not normal. Arthritis is not normal. Strife and division in your marriage, it ain't normal. Always struggling to pay your bills and living under the burden of debt, it ain't normal. There may be a history of cancer. This is what I get sick of. Well, you know, Aunt so-and-so had heart trouble. Listen, you got, everybody got family like that. Well, you know, Cousin Earl died. Hope you ain't got no cousin Earls that died. If you do, I'm sorry. See, because let me tell you something. Uh, you, you you hear what I'm saying? You you see so you hear what I'm saying? See, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that. Listen to me. People are buying into that. Well, you know now that it runs in your family, and then you accept that lie. You believe that, and then before long, you've got symptoms. Oh, my, my, you you got symptoms going on in your life. But I come to tell you, ain't no symptom up in this room. Ain't no symptom, cause I tell you, it's under the blood. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. Can I tell? you uh, there may be a history of cancer and heart trouble and diabetes in your family and the doctor may say it's in your bloodline it's in your genetics but it's not normal because you need to look at that sucker and say but yeah buddy but I got a new DNA I had a blood transfusion I got the blood of Jesus all over me go ahead go ahead go ahead I've got DNA all the way back from Calvary that's flowing through my veins 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things have passed away and behold all things become new you may look at your family tree oh Lord, and see alcoholics and drug addicts, wife beaters, but it's not normal. See, you have a new family tree because Jesus is the vine and I am the branches. There may be homosexual and lesbians in your family line. What are you trying to do, preacher? I'm trying to start a rebellion. I'm trying to start an uprising. I'm trying to start a revolt that's going into 2021 against anything and everything that is less than God's will for your life. There will be never, never be a change until you recognize what is abnormal and out of order and you begin to rebel against it. Come on, somebody. 
I'm preaching better than you're shouting. I promise you that. And you will never rebel against it. Listen to me. What is abnormal and out of order until you're convinced of God's normal and God's divine order for your life? Sickness cannot be normal when Jesus took 39 stripes on his back for your healing. That's a lie from hell that you, you just got to learn to live with it. No, no, you got to learn to accept it. You got to learn to accept what he did on the cross before he ever went to the cross. When they was beating up on his back, I am healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I'm healed. I declare healing. Anybody got any sickness in your body, stand to your feet and declare healing all over your body right now. I declare by those stripes, I am healed. Poverty and lack cannot be normal. When God says, I'll make you the lender, not the borrower, above and not beneath, the head, not the tail, fighting and arguing can't be normal for a marriage. Because our marriages are supposed to be mirror images of the church relationship to Jesus Christ. Are you with me? People are supposed to be able to look at our marriages and see how much Christ loves the church and the church loves his Christ. Listen to me. Living under the yoke of fear and anxiety and worry and stress can't be normal. Boy, I hit some of you right there because you're trying to live under anxiety, fear, stress, and worry. It ain't normal because the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I can feel the Holy Ghost rebellion beginning to rise up in this place right now. I feel a fight coming back into somebody right now. I can feel the holy indignation, righteousness, and anger stirring up right now against the devil and all his lies. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody is about to make up your mind that the devil has pushed you around long enough, and now you're going to be the one to do the pushing. If there's anybody today that's ready to do the pushing, why don't you stand up on your feet and begin to push? Begin to push. I'm ready for 2021, but I don't know if it's ready for me. Because 2020 learned me something. It taught me some things. It taught me how to look at God and depend upon God. You say, what has it taught you? It taught me how to get on my knees and to say, God, be with me or with him I die or with him I live. But I'm going to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Woo. You tired of being pushed around? I hear God saying the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violence going to take it by force. I hear the Holy Ghost say upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I hear the Spirit saying, Behold, I give unto you power to tread, trample, crush on serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. I come to this house this morning with this word in my spirit and God said to tell my people, It's over! It's over. I wish somebody would stand up right now and take your authority and begin to tread him right now. Trample him, crush him, put him under your feet. I come to tell you to quit looking for those old familiar enemies. Quit looking for them old familiar enemies every morning when you get up because you're not going to see them anymore. 
I come to speak something. I come to speak truth. You say, Pastor, how can you get up and stand and preach something like that? Because I come with authority right now. I'm telling you, I'm under the authority of the Holy Ghost. I'm under the authority of God. And I come to tell you this, that God has given me the power of life and death in the mouth and in my tongue. And I come to speak it. If you can't speak it for yourself, I'm going to speak it for you. Because I come to tell you, I'm tired of that. I'm telling you that they got to go in the name of Jesus. How many people's tired of coming to church on Sunday and thinking you got free and then you find them, then you pick them back up. You pick them back up on Monday. Shout now. See, the problem is this. We learn to live with it. Oh, and we get mad when somebody tells us what's going, what's, what's, what's really happening. Because you've done took them personal. Are you with me? You'll be all right in a minute. See, here's what I came to tell you. He's getting ready to put a period at the end of a long, hard battle. I came to tell you this morning it's over. I come to tell you to quit looking for those old familiar enemies because you're not going to see them anymore. Some of you are going to live, feel like David. Listen, when he said, uh, we're like them that dreamed when the Lord turned our captivity, then was our mouth filled with laughter. What God is getting ready to do in some of your lives uh, today, he's going to be awesome. Listen to me. He is going to, you're going to feel like you're dreaming. Uh, listen, uh, he's going to dream drowns your enemies. Uh, they're going down right now. Sickness and diseases is going down. Addiction and bondage is going down. Depression is going down. Uh, poverty and lack is going down. Uh, marriage problems going down. Uh, worry and stress is going down. Uh, you say what I have to do. Uh, here's what God said for you to do. Uh, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord uh, for he will show you today that he done for the that he done to the Egyptians. Listen which you have seen today. The ones you have seen today, you what? You'll see them again when? When? Never! No more! No more. Listen to me. In other words, God is saying, just stand over there. Watch me work. And while you're praising me, I'll take care of business. While you praise me, I'll take care of business. Because the, I just wonder, has anybody got enough faith just to stand still and to begin to praise God while he works? Is there anybody that's got enough faith that'll stand still and just praise him while God works? The more you praise him, the bigger he's gonna get. The more you praise him, the harder work. The more you praise him, the more power that is going to be released. The more you praise him, the more confused the enemy gets. The more you praise him, the more faith will rise up in you. The more you praise him, the more joy will rise up in you. Listen to me. While Moses' hands were raised on the mountain, Joshua won the battle in the valley. While your hands and your voices are raised in praise, God is going to fight your battles. I said, while your hands is raised in your voice and praise, God is going to fight your battles. Turn me up a little bit, Curtis, if you can. You got that thing over there with you? Turn me up because I'm fixing to need it. There are some things that God expects us to do to require us to do. He requires us to read the word to learn his will. He requires us to believe his word and to confess his word is truth. But when you have done everything you can do, when you have prayed, you have fasted, you have confessed the word, you have rebuked the devil, you have pled the blood of Jesus, you have shouted in the name of Jesus, God said now I'll take it from here I'll take it from here I said you stretch out the rod and I'll divide the sea 
You walk around the walls and shout and I'll do the one to knock them down. You stand on my words and I'll rebuke cancer. You prophesy to the wind and I'll make dry bones live again. You sow your seed and I'll bring the harvest. You stand still and praise me and I'll loose the bands. I'll open the prison doors and I'm taking to the people. Listen, and I know I'm talking to people right now like the children of Israel in our text. You feel like the enemy has got the upper hand. You feel like you've been backed in a corner. Your back's against the wall. You feel trapped. You can't go forward and you can't go back. Up until now, you have been able to do a slip by and struggle through in the past you fought your way out of listen to me you've been hanging on by a thread of hope that someday somehow some way it's going to get better it's going to work itself out is there anybody I'm talking to listen to me the truth is you haven't re- you have reached the place of desperation You can no longer see your way out. You can no longer figure your way out. How it could ever change. You can no longer see the light at the end of the tunnel. It looks hopeless and there is no relief in sight. No hope in sight is anybody I'm talking to. This may not make sense to you. But this is a great place to be. Listen to me. Because now you're ready to shift into the faith dimension. God led them into a trap. See what you've looked at? Listen to me. Some of you right now are going through all kinds of hell with your family. Situations. But I want you to understand this. God led them into a trap. Oh, you ought to give God praise for it right there. Why? Because he removed every dependence upon what they could see, feel, or hear to show them how to walk by faith and not by sight to show them this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Has 2020 taught you anything? Has 2020 done anything? Listen to me. It says it is to show them that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God in the pulling down of strongholds to show them that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. God purposely led them into a trap out of their enemies. Listen to me. When their enemy thinks that you, when your enemy thinks that you're trapped, that you're helpless, that you're down and you can't get up, they begin, they become very brave and expose themselves to come in for the kill. God purposely has led them into the trap to bring an end to their to their enemies it is a setup for a takedown I said it's a setup for a takedown. God said today I'm going to put a period at the end of this chapter. I'm going to put this thing. The enemy that has oppressed you, abused you, persecuted you, made your life miserable. The enemy that has cheated you, stolen from you. The enemy that has made slaves out of you, slaves out of your children, tried to try to destroy your destiny. But today is the end. It's over. I'm prophesying to somebody today that God is about to wipe some devils out. God is about to wipe some things out. Hallelujah, listen. Listen. It's what I feel the Lord saying to you tonight, this morning. Stand to your feet all over this room. This is the end. This is the end to a bad chapter. 
This is the end to a lot of grief, a lot of pain, a lot of misery. This is the end to a lot of guilt, a lot of shame. This is the end to a lot of sickness that has been trying to take against your life. This is the end of running from your past. This is the end of struggling under heavy burden of debt. This is the end of living in fear and what other people think and what other people say about you. This is the end of being manipulated, intimidated, and dominated by your circumstances and the opinions of others. This is the end of slavery to the habit or the addiction that you've been stringing, that's been stringing against you. I said this is the end of all that. It's over. And when you look, when they looked the next morning, they saw the Egyptians dead upon the shore. Not one of them escaped. I know it may sound impossible to you, but God wants to give you complete victory. We've gotten used to temporary, partial victory, but God wants to give you complete and permanent victory. No more one step forward and three step back after today. Today is your day for complete and permanent victory. Is anybody ready? Today is your day to say goodbye once and for all. Those enemies that have plagued your life, those things that's come against you in 2020, that things that have made your life miserable, that have been stealing your joy, stealing your peace, trying to steal your anointing. Uh, they're not, we're not all fighting the same battles here today. We don't all have the same issues, uh, but we all, we all have enemies uh, that have been sent to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But today is your day. Uh, look up on the shore, see your enemy uh, that has been removed from your life. Uh, I declare and decree for you to shout today, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. Yeah, I'm telling you, uh, is there anybody ready to drop some stuff off uh, from 2020 that you're not taking into 2021? Hallelujah, throw both hands in the air. Hallelujah. 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 Put that down and come here. Stand right there. Lift both hands. Come on, she ain't the only one. Come on, she ain't the only one. Come on, she ain't the only one. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, lift your hands all over this room. Lift your voice all over this room. Come on. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired yet? Some people may look at this message, they may hear this message, they may watch this and say that preacher's plumb crazy and that's okay. Sunday of 2020. You've been going through some things this year. Everybody has faced things. Ain't nobody been singled out this year. But there is some of us that can stand on this last Sunday of 2020 and say, if God be for me, woo, hallelujah, yeah, yeah, I feel something moving in this place. 
I feel something moving in this place. Just take some, mo- take a few moments and just worship Him right now. Come on, come on. about to be a release. You're going to feel it. I'm telling you right now. He said, stand still and praise me. Stand still and praise me.
it to me, devil, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. You've walked on me long enough, now I'm gonna walk on you. I'm tired of you saying you've had me bound way too long. I'm gonna raise my hands towards heaven. I'm gonna sing me a happy song. Well, you said I couldn't make it, and you told me not to try. Well, I'm gonna live for Jesus till the day that I die. I'm tired of you saying you've had me bound way too long. I'm gonna raise my hands towards heaven. I'm gonna sing me a happy song. You threw the Hebrew children in the red hot burning fire, but they came out the winner, devil. You came out. God's children and you're tired of being bound down. Raise your hands towards heaven and pull your blessing down. I'm tired of you saying you've had me bound way too long. I'm gonna raise my hands towards heaven. I'm gonna sing me a happy song. Well, I wrote a little message and I wrote it just for you.
There's been some things that has been released off of you this morning. There's been some things, if you will just stand on this, if you'll hang on this. The enemy has tried to shut the church up in 2020. He's tried to come against the church. Tried to come against God's people. Many of us has faced things everybody has faced. One thing in particular. But many of us have faced individual things. Things that it just seems to be just that they've come out of nowhere. But I'm going to tell you this morning there's been a release in this room today. There has been a release in this room today. I'm telling you, it's over. It's over. Your shout will get different. Your praise will be different. Your mind will be different. Your attitude will be different. Because there's been something that has been released off you. Hallelujah. I want you to just lift your hands right now and give God praise for that right now. been dog in your heels. Come on. Come on. Come on. The scripture says the Lord saved Israel that day and out of the hand out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Hallelujah. Shatalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalalal
Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> many drop some junk off on your way out this morning. Amen. We'll have church tonight at 6 o'clock and then here's what I want you to, uh, I want to make an announcement right now. Gen, uh, Thursday night, 7 p.m. We won't have service Wednesday. We're having full blown service Wednesday or Thursday evening. 7 o'clock. The scripture that I give you, I'm going to preach off that, or preach around that. I'm not going to preach off of it Thursday evening. But um, also, January the 3rd through January the 30th, we're going to begin a fast. Come on, somebody. We ain't fasting General Hospital. That ain't no fast. We ain't fasting Facebook. That ain't no fast. We're going to fast food. Not fast food, McDonald's fast food. But we're going to fast. Some people can't fast without eating something. And I understand that. So here's what we're going to do for you. From, third, from the 3rd to the 30th, no meat, no sweets. Fasting ain't easy. How many needs breakthrough in your life? How many needs something? Amen? More or less, that's a Daniel fast. That gives you opportunity to eat if you need to eat. You just can't eat meats or sweets. 
Everybody good with that? I see it's you you really, really I could have said sneakers, huh? Meat and sweets. But we're going if you can fast without eating, you don't have to do it the full I mean, you fast how 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 you're led, but listen to me, I'm talking about not eating. I'm talking about giving up something. Not Facebook. That's baloney. I'm sorry if you fasted Facebook and you called it a fast. That ain't no fast. Go to the Bible and look what fasting is. Amen? Because we need some things to happen in 2021. I'm believing. It's already happening. We're just going to carry it on over. Amen? I believe that God has got something for each and every one of us. Uh, and as a church, let me see. Um, I guess that's it. Um, also, March 21st, I will have a flyer as soon as my wife gets it made for me. I've been on her about a week now to get this thing made. Not going to, we're not going to bring it out till the first after the first. But uh, March the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th will be our revival. That helps the firecracker people. That helps the vacation people. So this place should really be full that those four sir, those four days. No excuses. It's what you asked for. Nope. Nope. Sean Strong will preach Sunday, Sunday night. Monday, Tuesday night will be um, Robert Martin. And Wednesday night will be Renee Moore. So there's our lineup. Amen. We were, we would, Melvin Sanchez was on my list, but we had trouble getting him here last year. And he has got released. His, his borders are open now. And, uh, but he, he's uh, not going to be here. Uh, he is going to be in, um, in, huh? No, no. He's going to be in, uh, where did I drive Brother John to? Arkansas. Nope, not Little Rock. Anyway, uh, I'll have to look. Uh, Sinclair. Um, Rock, huh? No, it's down by Conway, Arkansas. Anyway, he's going to be there in February, but it's on a Wednesday night. I was going to load up and take take people, but can't go on Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Amen. Distractions. Amen. God is moving. Amen. So.